Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 6th Democratic Alliance from Pumalanga Provincial Congress. Welcome, Sunny Bonani. Welcome, Molweni Luchani Sianukela. Welcome to the city of Mbumbela, the capital of Mpumalanga, the gateway to the low felt, where abundant sunshine and lush covered hills and valleys form the ideal base of nature. We trust that you will enjoy this historic day with us. Today marks the end of a significant leadership era in our party. Today, we are part of a new beginning. Today, our leadership changes. Today, we pay tribute to a leader who has championed the growth of the DA. And today, we begin our journey to achieving even greater heights. Today, we reflect on the past. We celebrate our unprecedented growth and diversity. We remember the values that we stand and fight for. And we begin the next chapter in our history as we embark on our journey to election 2016. Today, we start shaping the future. It was the year 2006, and fresh out of a successful local government election, with former provincial leader Clive Hatch still at the helm, a federal decision was taken to drive the internal re-engineering of the DA, and for the first time, to see the structural separation of the DA's political and operational arms. It was a DA makeover that set internal organizational change at the very center of the DA's agenda. The re-engineering process resulted in the creation of Mpumalanga's first professional staff establishment. A director, finance, membership staff, and constituency operation managers were appointed and the results were almost instantaneous. In June 2006, contesting award held by the ANC, the DA's Anfia Grobler won the Ward 23 by-election in Middleburg. And again in June 2007, the DA won a second ANC Ward, with Johan Oakham winning the Ward 7 by-election in Sabi. The winning of those by-elections was absolutely incredible. It proved to us that we had the people, we had the policies, and with hard work, the ANC were not invincible. We could go out there, we could challenge them in their own strongholds, and we could win. That was a tremendous boost for the party. And we could go forward with confidence that we could take them on anywhere. The impact of the DA's internal change and political growth across the country made 2007 a year of exciting change within the party, both nationally and in Mpumalanga. It was the election of Helen Ziller as DA leader at the Federal Congress in May 2007 that would shape the direction of the party and set us on a path of continual growth. Honoured by the trust you have placed in me, humbled by the challenge that lies ahead, inspired by the example of those who have come before me, and delighted by the opportunity I have been given. I here accept nomination as your leader. With the change of party leadership at a national level, Mpumalanga soon followed suit, and at the Provincial Congress in 2007, Anthony Bernardi was elected as provincial leader. Naturally, I was a bit disappointed um, to lose to Anthony. But there was a whole new atmosphere of change in the party. And I think it was inevitable that there would be change in the provinces. And it was a good thing. And I believe that it was probably the right move at the right time, because Anthony brought youthful enthusiasm into the party. He was keen. He had the energy to go out and work seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. And I, was seeing, I think we saw the change in the party 
We saw the party grow in every election thereafter. It was wonderful to see our party invigorated with its new feeling of change and enthusiasm. With a new leadership team elected, change within the province was happening fast. Winning more by-elections, professionalizing the organization, and setting in place resources and strategies to increase the DA's efficiency and visibility, the DA in Mpumalanga led the way on many fronts. We became the first province to acquire our very own election battle bus. This was replaced with a newer bus in 2013. The battle bus has traveled thousands of kilometers across the province and together with the rest of our fleet has become an integral part of every campaign in the province. The purchasing of our very own provincial head office in Middleburg in May 2008 provided us with a permanent seat from where the operations of the party could be managed and driven. Love it or hate it, the effective implementation of the PDMS system to manage the performance of every public representative has directly contributed to the increased visibility of the DA in all communities. The implementation of Blue Blitz weekends saw DA structures conducting high-profile, visible political activity across the province at the same time. These, together with many other achievements, including extensive leadership tours, the implementation of national campaigns, increased organizational efficiency, winning elections, and most importantly, attaining overall growth, saw the efforts of every member and public representative rewarded when Mpumalanga won the prestigious Province of the Year Award at the DA's Federal Congress in 2012. While we can be proud of Mpumalanga's performance and contribution to the DA's growth, significant events in recent years cannot go unnoticed. The unveiling of the new DA logo in November 2008 also set the tone for a new political strategy and outlook that filtered across the country. Our commitment to deliver on the dreams of the Rainbow Nation was declared and continues to be our primary goal. Furthermore, the 2010 merger between the DA and the Independent Democrats symbolizing the DA's commitment to the realignment of South African politics strengthened the DA's ability to challenge the ANC at the polls. Nothing reveals the significance of these events more than the election scoreboard. The DA has been on a constant election growth path in the 2006 municipal election, winning 7.5% of the vote with 92 councillors elected. In 2011, we grew to 13.68% of the vote with 127 DA councillors being elected. We attained 7.4% of the vote in the 2009 general election, growing from 10.4% in 2014 adding no less than 41,700 new voters to the DA poll. And by 2014, we had grown the DA representation in the provincial legislature from one seat to three seats. We grew from only two parliamentary seats for Mpumalanga to five in 2014. But it is in by-elections that Team Mpumalanga rarely pulls together. Having contested 22 by-elections in Mpumalanga since 2007, we have grown our electoral share in every single one. 10 DA wards have been contested and retained with increased majorities. In ANC strongholds, the DA attained an average growth of 15% in every election contested. Having won two ANC wards in Middleburg, one in Sabi, and one in Kraskop, we have accumulated a formidable track record of growth. Building on the 2006 result, it is of proud significance that since the election of Anthony Bernardi as provincial leader in 2007, the DA has not lost a single vote in the province. After the, the, the acquiring of the bus in Pumalanga since 2007, when we decided we want to grow this party, 
and the DA has been actually doing very well since that time. It actually have helped us a lot. And the most important one, it was when we actually have to get the ANC around the battle bus, and they thought maybe they will be doing far harm to us. In actual fact, they are really motivating us. They were making us to talk more about the ANC than talk about the election. And all every time we were there, we made sure that the, whatever we were saying, people could understand that the DA is actually not afraid of the ANC members. And people actually understood that the ANC is just a political party like any other political party, and it can be beaten. And we, that's how we got most of the votes in Pumalanga. And I, I can tell you, Pumalanga, we have done very well, and we'll still carry on doing very well in Pumalanga. However, it is not only in contesting and winning elections where the Pumalanga team excels, but in our legislature and councils as well. Under Anthony's tenure, the DA's performance has been progressive and exciting filled not only with political victories, but characterized by our uncanny ability to influence the provincial political agenda, to hold the government to account, and to be a constant thorn in the heel of the ANC. We are fearless in exposing corruption and tireless in the service we provide to our voters. Since 2007, with the dedicated assistance of our legislature, research and communication staff, DA MPLs have submitted no less than 535 questions to the Premier and MECs, tabled 125 members' statements and motions in the provincial legislature, delivered 124 speeches and debates, issued 237 pieces of correspondence, and issued no less than 1,300 press releases resulting in thousands of DA media hits. We fought for the tricks who did not receive their matric certificates in 2008. The DA exposed the tender irregularities and the overpricing of the Mpumalanga Archives building. In 2011, the DA discovered that the TMT unmanned traffic cameras in the province were not licensed and had no authority to give fines to motorists. Through sustained pressure, TMT finally lost their contract. The DA has exposed the excessive amounts spent on the Premier's and MEC's luxury vehicles and the lavish catering expenses at the provincial legislature. In 2012, the DA worked tirelessly to save the town of Pilgrim's Rest following perverse tender rigging by government officials. We have exposed the collapsing sewer infrastructure and the lack of management across the province. We cast the spotlight on poor quality health care, resulting in findings by the Public Protector and Human Rights Commission. It was the DA, spearheaded by Farhat Essak, that exposed the shocking state of the Leidenberg dumping site. And it is the DA who constantly places the infamous Moloto Road on the provincial and national agenda. Across the province, DA constituencies are fighting for their communities, fighting to place Imalasleni under administration, fighting for emerging farmers in Tembesile, fighting corruption and maladministration in Imakazeni, Mbombela, Lekwa and Mkondo, fighting for the protection of heritage sites in Pixli Kaseme and Steve Tuete, fighting for the quality water supply in Msugalikwa, Mkomazi, Unjindi, Bushbuck Ridge and Albert Lutuli. Fighting against the sewer crisis in Governor Mbeki, Tabacheo, Steve Tuete and Lekwa. Fighting for safer Moloto roads in Dr. J.S. Morok. Fighting for better road conditions in Dipaliseng and Victor Kanye and fighting the electricity crisis in Tabacheo. Our forward momentum is unstoppable. Our holding of the ANC to account is never ending. Our electoral growth is guaranteed and our collective voices will not go unheard because we are shaping the future.